Jerry Rose here in the Rose String Works Workshop. I thought I'd put a front end on this video to kind of let you know what's going on. I have spent absolutely all day editing this video. Now I did have a couple hour interruption in there if I'm being truthful, but I started editing this video at 8 in the morning. It is now after 7. I would even say it's probably 717 I can see on my clock over there right now. That's a long time to edit a video. I just wanted to let you know that I think personally this is one of my best videos and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I tried to leave in as much detail as I could for those of you who want to understand how to actually build the instrument yet I tried to cut out all the boring parts for those people that uh, are just looking for entertainment. So I hope I hit some kind of a happy medium. This is about uh, one of our visitors that came and stayed at a retreat. His name is Eddie. He brought five instruments. In this particular video, I'm going to break it out and we're only going to show the um, video on the bigger project. We will get to the other four instruments perhaps sometime down the road. But uh, I just wanted to let you know how this is all going to break out here. We're only going to show the project that uh, was on the main instrument that he brought that took most of the work. <laughs> And let me tell you, it was a surprise to me. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. That's all I need to say right now. The rest of it will speak for itself. And uh, just be patient with us because part two will take a while before I can get it out, I'm sure. It'll probably be at least a week before you'll see part two. So just know that up front. Thanks for watching. Hello, my good and faithful friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with a... Well, let me just say it this way. There are fans and there are super fans. And we have a super fan right here. <laughs> and that would be Mr. Eddie Holiday. And nice Eddie, to meet everybody. Yeah, it's uh, good to have you here, Eddie. Eddie's going to stay a few days up there at our rental retreat. What do you think about it so far? Oh, it's beautiful. Y'all did some great work on that thing. It's beautiful. <laughs> I, I'm pretty proud of it. It turned out pretty decent, you know, for something I built anyway. Yeah, well, you did a good job on it. It's real good, isn't it? It's nice and there's pretty uh, For those of you who don't know, that used to be my workshop. I built it years and years ago. Well, when I say that, it's about 2001, I think, is when I built it. I built it as a workshop, but I built it like a house so that I could convert it to a house later. And that's what I did. And now it's a rental retreat. My super fan here, Eddie has loaded me down. I mean, like he has cut out the work for me and stacked it up right here. <laughs> but he also brought a whole lot of gifts, and I'm gonna show you those in a moment too. I mean, like a whole lot of gifts. But in the moment, I'm holding one of the five instruments he brought. Now this one needs some work. Actually, in one way, it doesn't need that much at all. In another way, it needs a whole lot. And uh, the way it doesn't need much is you could probably set it up and get it to play just about like it is, but that doesn't suit old Eddie. He likes a little bigger neck than this thing has. And I have to yeah. say, this thing has a tiny neck. It, I mean, it feels like it's a tenor guitar neck. I mean, it's that small. It's really tiny. And so he would like a larger neck made for this. He would like it while he waits for it. <laughs> but you know how that is. People in uh, low places want stuff and sometimes they don't get it. <laughs> so I don't know if we can fill that bill or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. I, you know, if I can get uh, the wood to gathered up here and get it glued up tonight, well then tomorrow I can cut it out. It doesn't take me very long to make a neck. I can make one in just a few hours. But it's a little more complicated than that because, you know, this one's a bolt-on. This one's also uh, got a very, very, very thin fretboard on it, which I've never even seen a fretboard that thin. I think that fretboard has been worked on before. Yeah, well, it's... Several times, probably. Probably has, but it's incredibly thin. I, I kind of have to think that was from the factory. It, I, you know, it's pretty thin all the way, the full length. My point about that is, you know, you've got to, whenever you build this, it's got to work back to this. Now, the sad thing is this has a very, very low cut bridge already. That's going to make the neck really difficult to match up to this. I guess I'm up for the challenge because I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. But you're going to either learn something good here or learn something really bad, one of the two. But you'll learn something. <laughs> so here we go. Before I get started on this guitar that has its own plumbing, if you look in there, you see the pipe. 
I don't know if it has cold water or hot water or both. Or maybe there's a portable shower coming out the back end. I don't know, but it's definitely got plumbing. You will recall, if you're a super fan like Eddie, that there was a guitar shown much, much earlier, many years ago. I think it was called a Palomino. Fender Palomino. I, I imagine that's probably what it was. But anyway, the point is, we got another one of those here. And he wants a different neck. And I've been studying hard to try to figure out how I'm going to do that. And I think, since this is an acoustic guitar, I'm going to put an acoustic guitar neck on it rather than this neck. And I think that will work better for me and for the purposes of widening it out. So he more or less wants a Martin style neck. I think we can figure that out how to do that. I've, I've got a, a regular fingerboard here and it matches up fret scale wise so we're good there. And when you lay the fingerboard flat on top of here, well, it pretty much matches this one. You know, I think I'm going to go ahead and build a neck with a heel and everything, but I'm going to bolt it on like this one's bolted on. So it's going to be kind of a combination of the standard guitar neck that I typically build with the bolt-on feature here. And the only other thing I'm concerned about is if I put the heel down here, how will I anchor the heel into this? I don't know. We'll figure that out as we get this thing apart and start uh, designing the neck. What am I going to build the neck out of, you might ask? That's another good question. I didn't have enough mahogany in stock, but I did have this really cool bird's eye maple. I don't know if the camera's going to wash out or let you see the grain in that, but look at the grain inside of that. It's going to be beautiful. So we're going to make a bird's eye maple neck. This board is a real twisted board, but you know, for a short neck and everything, I'm pretty sure, and it's plenty thick, I'm pretty sure I can straighten it out and um, make a real nice neck out of it. You know, it's been drying in the shop here for probably at least 10 years. So it should be well seasoned and ready to go. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take the neck off of this thing so I can start making some progress because if we're gonna try to build a neck while he's here, we're gonna have to move in a hurry. From my perspective, the neck is about the easiest thing on an instrument to build. It, it really is for me, it's, it's not that tough, but to try to retrofit it to a guitar that has a different design, it might take a little bit of work and a little bit of thinking. Now, not only do we have a guitar with its own plumbing, but we have a guitar with a big old aluminum pin there too. I'm not sure if we'll need that or not in, in the rebuild here. I kind of don't think we'll need that. That's a location pin. I think partly what they do that for is because you got so much pull this way. The screws would hold a lot of that, but that pin there would keep a lot of that from happening too. So that's probably what that pin serves as. I don't think they really needed it to locate the neck so much. Now I've got to go to the drawing board here and uh, draft this thing up to fit this neck. I'm not sure which comes first, the chicken or the egg. I may have to cut that stock up and get it squared up, get it glued together so I'll have something to make it out of once I get it drawn up. So maybe that's the first thing I got to do is cut up the uh, raw bird's eye maple. So I guess that will be the first thing I'll do is I'll get the raw bird's eye maple, get it cut up and make it a little longer than I need here, a little wider than I need so that I can cut it down to what I need. Well, this is my first bit of planning here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I've kind of rough drafted what the neck should look like. And this is just kind of rough drafted at the moment because this all those lines are going to disappear. And so I did the same thing on this side. So what I'm really going to do now is I'm just going to simply take the bandsaw and saw between these. And then I'm going to do my best to get them all squared up and glue them together at least, you know, to get a, a next start. That's where I, I got to start somewhere. I got to get it all figured out here. But the, I think the next step is to saw it with the bandsaw and then uh, figure out what the next step is after that. I'm a little confused. Never done it like this before, but we'll figure it out as we go. Ain't nothing to it except to do it. So here we go. We're gonna. This board is so warped. That's the reason I want to just rough all this out right now. Is because I've got to straighten all this out and get it glued back up so we can make a neck out of it. You know, I'm halfway tempted to plane it before I saw it, at least on this one side. 
on the joiner, I'm thinking about running it through the joiner. I'm just wondering if that would help me or not. And I'm not really sure whether it would help me or not at this point. I kind of think if I saw it now, I'll saw some of that twist out of it and I can flatten out each piece a little better than I could, and I think I'll have less waste than if I try to flatten this big twist. So I kind of think it's better to saw it first and then flatten it, but boy, it's six and one half, half a dozen in the other. Here we go. Well, there you go. I think that was the right decision because there's less twist in that now. Uh, as opposed to going all the way across it. There's still twist in it, don't get me wrong, but but I think I can get the twist out of each one of them with less waste. We'll try that next. Off camera I planed the first piece and that went just as good as it could go. Um, it took all the twist out of it, it's just as flat as a pancake now, and you can see that beautiful grain in that wood. It's going to be beautiful once it's stained if we do stain it, whatever we're going to do to it, finish it anyway. Quite honestly, I would prefer this to be oriented differently. I would prefer it to be oriented like that, but I can't do that with the wood I have available. So you got to make the best out of, out of it that you can. So it's going to have to go like this. Now these two grains are kind of going in the same direction. They're kind of going this way and this way. You know, it isn't really going to hurt anything. You're not going to really notice that once I build the, the neck. But uh, I would prefer it to be the other way if I could. This side is planed, so I'm going to plane this side now to, to make them flat together. Here we go. I believe that's going to work. That should be two flat surfaces together there now, and they're really flat, so that's good. The grain pattern down through there really does look very similar, so I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. I think we did fine. I think it's going to turn out really good. There's a little bit of um, bark inclusion right here, but that's going to be cut off because we're going to have the peg head angled here, so that'll be cut off, so that should be fine. So all the defects are out of it. Uh, it looks like it's going to be good clean wood and we should be able to make a good neck out of that. Okay, I think what my next step is, um, is I'm going to lay this planed side against the fence and I'm going to make a 90 to the top here. That way I can line them up. When I do glue this all up, I'll have good flat surfaces to start from. Okay, now I think you can start to see what we're doing here. You can see that the, the seam is going to be pretty tight. There, it's good and flat. I think I'm going to cut myself a piece of accent dark wood, like a piece of walnut, to go in between these. Just a real thin strip, probably like an eighth inch thick or something like that, just to give it a little off accent look uh, to it. Plus, just the fact that it's a different wood and different grain pattern, it always makes the uh, joint just that much stronger too. But, it, but I'm mostly doing it for decorative purposes because this is going to be plenty strong the way it is. This bird's eye maple, by the way, is incredibly hard, straight, uh, stiff wood. So it's a great wood to make a neck out of. It'll be a little bit on the heavy side, but all that does is give it sustain. So it's not really a big issue or anything. I am over here at the vacuum pressing systems bag, and uh, we're going to get this neck glued up. I've added a strip of walnut just to do, to have a dark accent piece. The first step is to get the glue on here. Got my trusty roller here. This is by far the best way to spread glue on a big surface is just use a roller. It really works fast and it does a really good job. And the other thing I like about it is it, it tacks the glue up so that the glue is actually a little bit tacky like standing up and so when you mate the two pieces together they stick really well. So it's kind of a win-win using this roller. The thing about the roller too is it really spreads the glue out well. It, it does a real good job of getting an even coat on things. I 
I made a piece of cardboard. I'm going to try this. I've never tried this before. I thought I'd lay this on top, and I think the air sucking down will suck the cardboard in. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and pre-bend the cardboard a little bit to give it a head start. And I think the air will just suck that cardboard down and keep the basket or the uh, bag from tearing on the sharp corners. You know, that's my plan. I hope the bag understands the plan. This hose already goes into the bag and it goes into that platen that I have under the glue up. Let's kick her on and we're going to kick her on to auto cycling. While it's sucking the air out, I'm going to try to do any last minute alignment here. Whoops. You can see the air starting to come out. I'm hoping I can keep the cardboard aligned. And yes, I know about salt and all that, I don't use it. It's a little bit off, I can tell. But I don't know if it's off enough to care. I think it's probably okay. It's only about a sixteenth off. And you can hear the vacuum bag it stopped. That is one solid brick now. I mean, you couldn't move it if your life depended on it right now. And I think the cardboard is not a bad option here. It seems to have done its intended job. Probably wouldn't have hurt if I left the cardboard a little bit bigger yet. Well, that's going to keep cycling for quite a while. For the moment, we are basically done. So that's what it looks like. It's uh, all glued up in one big piece. My friends, it's about 7.45 a.m. the next morning, working on Mr. Holiday's neck rebuild for his Fender acoustic guitar. You can see I've taken it out of the vacuum pressing systems bag, and uh, it seems to be glued up really well. Now, the trick, the next trick is, is getting this perfectly flat and hopefully square to at least one side. That could be a trick in itself. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is, is get this flat on this edge. So we'll go over to the joiner and do that first. And then once we get that flat, then we'll turn one edge to this and try to flatten it off. And hopefully it will be parallel with this line so that we can cut the truss rods slot. So, you know, it's... You know, it might seem like it's all straightforward, but there's nothing straightforward about any of this. Be especially when you're dealing with wood that's twisted, you know, and that kind of thing. Now, keep in mind, I flattened out the two mating surfaces here. So, with this area, the center line and all that is, is perfect. So, we basically are trying to work from this center line is really what we're trying to do. It just ain't easy being me. Okay, we're at the joiner, and the tricky part of this is trying to keep this square to the table, uh, and there's really no reference. So I'm just more or less having to eyeball it, trying to keep it on center and slide it down through there, and then we'll just have to see how square we are. Kind of splitting hairs here, to be perfectly honest with you. It's close to square but not perfectly square. So basically I need to tip it, I'm just exaggerating, but I need to tip it like this as I run it through here. Now of course I only need to tip it slightly. Basically the way I do that is I put all the pressure on this side so that it cuts more on this side than this side. That's really about all you can do. That's probably as good as I'll ever get it. That does look pretty square to me. When I look down through here now, it looks better than it did the last time too. I could tell it was slanted slightly this way, so it would be nice if I could square up one face of this so I could run it through the table saw to cut the truss rod. I'm gonna have to look at that and decide what's gonna be best because these are really twisted on the outside. I mean, they're really very twisted on the outside. This one's closer to flat than this one is. So I'll probably work off of this side here. This side here seems to have more issues. 
I think this fence is pretty square. Let me double check that first. It appears like it's slightly out. So I'm going to square up the fence. Then I'll run this square to this, and then that should square up this side here. I have adjusted the fence to get it perfectly square. I don't even see any light coming through the square now, so it's got to be pretty dang close. You know, I'm going to keep this flat edge against the fence and flatten off the uh, face on this side here. So here we go. I think we've got a good square face to this. Now I'm going to check to see how parallel it is. More than likely it'll have to be off a little bit, but, but hopefully it's pretty darn close so I can run this through this edge through the table saw and cut this truss rod slot. Well, you just saw me run this through the joiner to square up the top and the one side so I can get it through the table saw. I will show you there looks like there's some little inclusions in here where little limbs grew through. That's part of these bird's eyes, I'm sure, like you can see them. But most of that I'm almost sure is going to disappear because it just happens to be right on the corner and I think we're going to cut almost all of that off on the neck. Uh, there might be a tiny bit of that showing up. Hopefully we can uh, disguise all that and cover it up. Nature is nature, you know, I can't fix that part. Hopefully this is good and square. Let's just measure it now and see if we can come up with a an idea, does it measure the same? Okay, and let's just see if we can get an idea of what it measures. Okay, it looks like that's it down the, on that end. Let me check this end. Boy, I tell you what, that's so close. I'm just going by eye, obviously, because there's really not much I can measure to, but that looks pretty dang close. So I think I'll go ahead and set up the table saw to cut this truss rod slot now. I'm at the table saw. I have it set at 3 eighths of an inch deep and I have this fence aligned so that it should cut right down the center line here. Ordinarily, I, you know, sw swap sides on this. In other words, I'll cut it this way, turn it around, cut it this way. And that works great when both pieces are the same size and parallel and all that. That's not the case here. So I'm gonna have to only work off of this one face. Makes it a little bit more complicated, but it's doable. I have a nice slot there. To be honest, I think it's a hair narrow still, so I'm going to have to uh, check my truss rod to make sure it's going to fit. So I'll do that off camera, and then we'll make the final adjustments. Well, I won't say that's perfect, but if it was any better than that, it would you would it wouldn't look like I did it. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Hope you enjoyed seeing how I cut the truss rod slot. That seems to be right down the center. That all turned out real nice with the truss rod there, so I'm tracing my pattern on here. What I do is just get the pattern lined up pretty well, and then I just trace the critical parts and I use a straight edge to draw the straight lines in between, like so. Tricky part is, you know, I'm only drawing this much of it in here because I don't know about all this area over here. This, because it all has to fit this, this big old cutout. So I've got to make all that custom. I've never done that before. I'm going to try to Figure that out based on how this neck lays here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it to be perfectly truthful with you because I don't know. I'm not going to get in any big hurry here. I'm going to stop, go offline, off camera here for a little bit and, and think about this and, and do some measuring and stuff because I only get to cut this one time. <laughs> I spent some time drawing and redrawing and measuring and remeasuring and thinking and rethinking and you know there just comes a time where you just have to do it. So I guess this is that time. I uh, use this pin as part of my location for measuring. I you know I tried to 
use everything I could that is as static as I could get. And the problem is, I, you just, there's just no pattern to do what I'm doing. So, you know, you just kind of have to figure it out on the fly. You know, you got to think about everything you can imagine. Their neck angle is important. Uh, you know, just pretty much everything is important. So, uh, you just, at some point though, you just got to, it's just like the bird leaving the nest. You just got to jump out. So that's where I'm going. I'm going to go jump out right here, right now. So let's go over to the bandsaw and it's all over but the crying. Well, I thought I had this all figured out, but I forgot about the wiggle waggle on the back side. This is just not flat or level or straight or anything. And so if I'm going to saw this, I don't want this thing rocking back and forth like this. And it does rock a lot. I don't know if you can see that. Because these are tr seriously were twisted boards. Off camera, I'm going to get this flattened out uh, before I try to saw this. Otherwise, I'll just end up with a mess. Well, there you have it, friends and neighbors. We have a uh, rough neck blank, and it's either perfect or it's not, and I'm not sure which yet, but we'll figure that out as we get into it. The heel ended up giving me a little trouble, partly because we just didn't have enough wood to work with, so if this is too short, and it might be, we may have to come up with some sort of a decorative heel cap to put on that, but we'll make it look like a feature rather than a flaw. So one way or the other, we'll get it done. You know, it's plenty wide, more width than we'll ever need. I'm gonna flatten this peg head off just a little bit on the sander. There's still a few little lines in that, but I don't think it's going to amount to anything. I'm basically going to check to make sure I've got it flat to this surface here. That's the main thing. Now I'm going to thickness the uh, back of this peg head, and I'll do that here on my homemade thickness sander. You know, it's pretty flat, but this will get it flat and parallel to this front surface here. The other thing that works out great about that uh, homemade thickness sander is that the curl of that fits the back of this really nice and just works out really well. Now we're flat here, flat here, and flat here. I think what I'll do now is I'll lay the fingerboard on here and line it up with the uh, body so that we can cut this off so that it's the, fret, the uh, 14th fret's going to line up with the body real well. So that's the next step, I believe. So I've got the fingerboard laid on here and you know a lot of this is just kind of by eye the seat of your pants whatever I'm just arbitrarily making that the end this end of the uh, fingerboard and then I go back here and I go to the 14th fret and I'm going to double check this just in case something isn't right here but one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which I was sure that was the 14th. Never hurts to double check it. And so there will be the body line right there. Previous mark that I had was close, but only close. Cut this section right here again. I know for sure it needs it because otherwise this won't extend in there far enough. So that should all work. I'm going to cut and leave the line though, that's for sure. You can always take more off. It's very difficult to add wood. So now that I've got this lined up, this lined up, and that end lined up, now I can see where the end of this needs to be. We're basically going to cut that off too. And I'm going to eyeball this to make sure I'm not doing something that I'll regret. But that should be long enough. There is going to be a little bit of this right here exposed when we're done. The, the old one went past here, but when you line this fretboard up or the, with this, it just doesn't work out that way. And this one's already been pre-made. So, you know, we're just going to have to deal with what we got. It shouldn't be a big deal. You'll just, it'll be just a little bit of a return right here. If I have to, we'll find a way to decorate that if we don't think it looks good, but I think it's going to look fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Then I think all of the rough shaping is done. And in case 
case you're wondering, you know, I didn't leave a dovetail. That's true, I didn't. I wouldn't have a good way to cut it here, for one thing, because of this stick out. That was one of the things I thought about last night. Um, it, I could have cut it by hand, no question, but it would have taken a lot of time and effort. But the bigger reason was, you know, what it would have to do to the guitar. And, and I'm not just sure that that pipe wouldn't get in the way and all those other things. So what I plan to do, instead of a dovetail, I'm going to, we're going to put the strap button back on here. And when we put the strap button on, we're going to put a little extra long strap button so that we can anchor this heel into the neck as well. Keep in mind that there will be four bolts through here anyway, which is the normal anchor for the neck. And then we'll have an additional anchor through here. So it should be just fine. The first thing I'm going to do for this is fit the neck to the body. That's kind of backwards from normal, but I think I have to do that because I don't know what I'm dealing with here and how this is all going to line up and all that. So I think I've got to cut all of this out and get this lined up here first before I start doing the rest of this neck. So that's at least going to be my game plan. I hope it's a good game plan. We will find out. You know, another one of my sayings that I say all the time, but I don't have it on a t-shirt. And I don't know if I've said it too much on video. And that is, this would be easy if it was just easy, but it ain't easy. That's the problem. This, it really would be simple, but it's complicated. Why is it complicated? Well, let me tell you why it's complicated. I'm about to tell you that. Keep your shirt on. It's complicated, first of all, because right here it's exactly two inches. No, I take it back. Right here it's exactly two inches. Down here it's two and a sixteenth. Now a sixteenth ain't very much, but when you measure in thousands ordinarily, a sixteenth is um, a bunch of thousands. I don't know how many it is <laughs> offhand. But anyway, it's a lot. It's, you know, a sixteenth of an inch off. If you were trying for a good snug tight fit, and you're off by a sixteenth of an inch, it'll fall out of there. Okay, that's the first problem. Second problem is, that also means it's not parallel. It's not straight. So that's problem number one. If that was the only problem, I'd fix that. Here's the second problem. Look at this. Can you see it in the video? How this side here is further from here to there than this side is from here to there. And I'm talking about the hole, yes, the, the round sound hole. So it's not exactly perfectly centered either. That's a little tougher to fix. I don't know how to fix that. I gotta build that fix into this is what I have to do. <laughs> like this isn't hard enough. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, another thing I say all the time is, if it was easy, monkeys could do it and you never see monkeys doing this. Never. And I don't want no weird comments. Okay, one more complication, and I'm just throwing this one in for good measure. This is like a bonus complication, okay? You get this one for free. But like if this is a straight edge, which it is, you can see that that's not. It rocks. So this isn't flat across here either. So what does that mean? That means I gotta concave this to make it fit that. Piece of cake. It would be a piece of cake if everything was straight and square. But as you saw in problem number one and problem number two, that makes problem number three even more difficult. Okay, you've seen complication number one, complication number two, and complication number three. Here's complication number four. This bridge is not exactly on the center line according to the holes here, at least. In other words, this hole is closer to the center line than this hole is. So it's that way. All of that has to be taken into account when you put the strings onto it because either, you know, you could have the strings, and I'm exaggerating, if, if you, you could have your strings running across your neck like this, you know, so you don't want that. Anyway, I'm just trying to look at it all and trying to figure out why my life is so complicated and why I chose this as a career path. <laughs> But that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Eddie's here in the shop watching me do this, and of course that makes me extremely nervous. Yeah, right. Not. Just kidding. It doesn't really make me nervous at all. But 
I think he's starting to understand how complicated this can be, you know, because, you know, here, here's the bottom line. I could just knock this out and make it fit and just go to get, and, and more than likely, because you started with something that's kind of screwed up, you'll end up with something that's kind of screwed up. You got to build all that into it so that you end up with something that's really nice. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's why it gets complicated. We were just talking about chocolate as that violin. You've probably seen that video series and how complicated that was. And it was in one regard, and I'm not trying to sound smart here or something, but the point is chocolate in one way was way simpler than this because chocolate was just a jigsaw puzzle putting it back together. And that's pretty much all it really was. They had to figure out a few things on how to reinforce a few things and stuff. But this is much more complicated in a lot of ways because nothing here is designed to fit together yet. <laughs> we gotta get it all figured out. And that's why this is a lot more complicated to me. Uh, alignment is very uh, important. And it's difficult to do when you don't have anything that you can reference off of. Cause like the center line's not good, the neck joint's not good, the circle doesn't seem to be in the center. I, there's nothing here to go off of. So I just having to guess and wing it and, and I'm not exaggerating when I say, I believe, seriously, this is way more complicated than chocolate was. Not as time consuming probably, hopefully, but uh, definitely more complicated. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera off here, do some more thinking and, and some more drawing and some lining up because I'm getting nowhere fast as with the way we're doing this. My new thought on how to line this up is, and this is probably just kind of crazy in one way, but I don't know any other way to do it. And that is, to just line up the center of this neck with the center of this bridge and forget everything else. That's about all I've got to go on because that's about the only point of reference that makes any sense at this point because everything else is crooked. That's about as straight as I can get that because I've got this running right down the center there and I'm doing that by eye. Line of sight, you're straight as line so I keep having to move it a little, just tweak it here and tweak it there and that's, but that's about the only way I've got to to do it I, that I can figure. Now that I've got that, it, and this is looking weird to me, uh, here's the hole there and here's the hole here. And I'm pretty sure the holes, the width from one side to the other is gonna be quite a bit different. Of course, that's not too important. What's really important is the width from, from here to here and from here to here. This would be simple if it would just be simple. Yeah, and you can see there a vast difference between here and here. Between here and here is much bigger than from here to here. Now, keep in mind, these boards aren't necessarily exactly the same. So you can't really go by that. What I really need to go by is the slot here. And the slot from here to here is that wide and the slot from here to there that's a sixteenth of an inch bigger. In other words from here to here is quite a bit less than from here to here. That's right on the line this is past the line by a sixteenth of an inch. That's not what I wanted to see but that's what I got when I lined it up by eye and lined it up with the center line there. I don't know if I'm brave enough to go with that or not but that's what it seems like it needs to do. And the other problem is, like I said, this is wider at one end than the other, and I forget which end now, but it's definitely wider at one end than the other. Let's just measure that specifically with the calipers here. That's 2.057, and this is 1.99. 50 thousandths plus bigger here. Actually, now I'm getting even more. 2.066, 1.98. So we're 60 thousandths plus bigger here than we are here. I think I'm gonna back up and punt and I'm going to take a chisel and try to true up this slot to the center of this. I think that's the only way I'm gonna ever get this done and, and know that it's gonna be right because this just ain't good. 60 thousandths off between here and here and there. Now, it could be that they did it on purpose. It could be that they tapered it. And I would go with that 
if I thought everything looked good and straight. Well, let's just see if that's what they did. But, I, you know, because here's the neck. But I don't think that's exactly what they did because it doesn't look straight. It doesn't look symmetrical. That's the better word. It doesn't look symmetrical. There's 2038 and there's 1956. So I guess they did do that on purpose to some degree. But the truth is that it doesn't fit all that great. You can see here, if you look at it, how much wiggle waggle there is in it. There's quite a bit. For something that was supposed to be wider back here and narrower up here, it, there's more wiggle wagger here than there is back here. So it, it just doesn't. Nothing about the whole thing makes any sense to me. Just for sanity's sake, I'm gonna try to get a square line off of this through the center here somewhere and then square up these sides to that center line because I don't know what else to do because it's just too complicated to try to figure it out and get a good fit and get it to work well. Okay, I just tried this and this is the squarest thing and closest thing I've come up with so far. And if I draw a center line between these, that should be on the one inch because this is two inches wide. That does line up with the front edge of this fairly well. It leaves a fairly symmetrical crack on both sides. This is the closest thing I've come to having something straight and square on this guitar. I think that's what I'm going with because I don't know what else to try. I'm going to uh, widen this hole to exactly two inches. I'm taking the X-Acto knife here, scoring it. We'll go with that. At least that gives me some kind of reference, because I haven't had one so far on this. All right, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna square up these two holes so that this will lay in there when I have it squared up to this bridge. So when I get that there, I'll show you what the next step is. <laughs> Give you a little update here on what I what my progress is. I have been squaring this hole up. Now, I, I've got the ruler fitting in here, or the square fitting in here just fine. It uh, goes right down into the bottom of it, as you can see. I am square to the bridge and on the center line here. And now, on this side here, I just squared it up, and you can see there's a, it touches all the way down. Or maybe you can see that. On this side, not so much yet. There, it touches up here, to about here and then it, there's a gap. So this is this is getting it parallel. So this is how I get it parallel. I just shave it off and if your chisel's really sharp, like this one, you can shave this off just in very fine amounts. I believe we're at least in the ballpark now. Okay. Let's just see how they measure now. They probably still aren't gonna measure just exactly the same, but they ought to be within 20, 30 thousandths or something. Okay, I'm getting 2065 roughly, 2046, not too terribly far apart, about 20 thousandths here or something in that neighborhood. That's not too much, but I, I still wanna get it a little better. This side here I know isn't quite as good as the other side. If I can get it within five or ten thousandths, we ought to be pretty happy with that, I would think. Okay, we ought to be almost on the money now. There's the 206.2 or so. This is 2060, oh, so, or 260 roughly. So we're within two thousandths now. That's pretty hard to measure, since that's about half of a human hair. Now if I'm splitting hairs, this side's not quite as good as, as this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it just a hair better. <laughs> it's just easier to do it now than wish I had done it later. That's got to be pretty good. All right, just for a sanity check here, I'm going to take this rasp and go in here and smooth it all off, uh, laying it flat on these edges, just to flatten it all off real good in case there's a little high spot here or there that the chisel left. All 
one last check on the measurements. Real close, within two to three thousandths, so I think we're fine. All right, now that should mean that we are square and flat with that slot to our bridge now, and it looks like it is to me. Now I see an even gap on both sides, so the strings should run up the middle of the neck now. At least I have something to measure off of now. So now, theoretically, I should be able to measure right off of here, half, you know, and so forth. I was doing a little bit of math, I should be able to draw the lines in here now on what I need to cut. So I'll do that off camera and I'll show you what I come up with. Well, I just did all the math here and I'm not gonna go through that with you, but basically it was just math on how to center this all up. And you know, I took the width of my truss rod slot into account there and measured off of that from each side as a sanity check to make sure that I'm not screwing something up. When I did it manually, these are the marks I got. But when I did it by math, these are the marks I got. And they're almost identical. And I said that this one was a half, uh, I mean, a, about a sixteenth of an inch closer. And now the new mark is out past there, which makes it center exactly the way I wanted it to be. So I think we're perfect. Um, it couldn't be much better. Now the idea is that I'm going to go ahead and cut these and, and cut them across here and across here and fit this to the neck first and get that fitted in there and make sure it's all straight and everything. I guess there ain't nothing left to do except to do it. Gonna be a complicated cut though because honestly, you know, I gotta saw this out and it's setting up on top of this and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be kinda tough to cut this off so I might have to give that a little bit of thought yet. Okay, I've got the level on here to keep me level. I would say don't try this at home. And yes, it would be easier to cut these off this way, but my problem is transferring those marks and getting them that accurate ain't that easy to do. So I'm just going to cut it this way. See, you can see the, the pretty good gap here. Mm -hmm. There's almost no gap here. No gap there. And see what I was talking about here. Yes. And look here. Nothing. How'd they get it like that? I, I, you got me. It is that's not is the sound hole in the center of the sound I would board? say that's part of the problem. They, they probably somehow got the sound hole mm -hmm. slightly off center. Now maybe it's off center for a reason. Nah, not normally. Not normally. Well, you know Fender, they were out there. Yeah, I don't think so. Not this case. <laughs> not in this case. Yeah, it's off by uh, it's off by almost a quarter inch. See that that slides down through, and this hits on top of the guitar inside the binding. That's how come nothing's lining up. Yeah, I don't feel. <laughs> I'll just show them that too, just to show that it's not me. Guess what? It actually fits. Not only does it fit, but look at that. It, you can pick it up and shake it. And I didn't force it in there. You might think, well, you must have forced it. I didn't. It's just sitting in there almost perfectly. See how easy it came out? It's just like, gee whiz. Look at that. <laughs> I can't believe that worked that well. I guarantee you that's a better fit than they had. <laughs> now, it's standing up a little proud of the top, and I'm glad of that because, you know, I may have to work on this neck angle uh, up and down a little bit. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to conquer the next steps here. I think the thing I've got to do next is get this heel fitting up tight to the body because because I told you it's not square, it's not flat, it's round. See, there's a big gap here. It's not real big, but there's a gap. And there's a gap on this side. And actually, I gotta be honest, the gap on this side is quite a bit bigger than the gap on that side. Now that could be how I cut it off. That's possible, but I don't think so. 
Anyway, I'm going to do some more thinking and measuring and shaking my head, and I'll show you what I come up with. You know, i just doing another sanity check. Everything looks fine for me because I've got my neck in line with, these, with this bridge and things are going to be cool. But you can see, first of all, that how it's almost touching here, but here it's way longer. I think you can see that. Way longer here than it is here. I pretty much had already concluded that the sound hole wasn't in the center, but here's, here's more proof of that. If you go to the narrowest place here to the sound hole, which is right about there, and then you go to the narrowest place to the sound hole here, we're inside the uh, binding by a sixteenth of an inch. And that's a pretty wide binding, so it's almost uh, a quarter inch in off, three sixteenths for sure. I'm debating on what my next step is here. I was trying to figure out a way to dish this out under here. You know, I mean, I could do it with chisels. I could do it with a Dremel tool by hand. I was trying to find, think of a way that would be more accurate than that, but I can't think of a way, so I guess I'm just going to have to get after it. I'm, I think I'm going to... Well, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm just start with a chisel, I guess. And, and just see if I can knock some of it out of here in the middle. I would really like to have the neck fitting up pretty good to the body before I go ahead and cut anything else. Because then I know it's going to work. And the rest of it is just decoration. This is all the hard part of the job. The rest of the job, carving all this, that's all 10 minutes worth of work. It's really easy, very fast. Not too worried about that. I know there's got to be a better way to do this. I've got all kinds of disc cutters and things that would work, but I'm afraid it might be too aggressive. I'm going to think on it a little bit and see if I can come up with a better plan. Okay, this is one I probably need my head examined, but I'm going to try this rotary rasp as lightly as possible. Try to start a little bit of a dish in here, but it's just going to be a small, light amount. At least that's the plan. Now, if it cooperates, that will be the plan. But if it doesn't cooperate, who knows what will happen. Here we go. It seems to have accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I got a little bit of a dish started there. And now I can probably do the rest of that by hand, I think, and make that fit up good. Okay, this is getting frustrating because everything I mentioned to Eddie, he's already seen it in a video. <laughs> I said, what do you think about my camera extension arm here? You know, it used to be a pop rivet gun. He goes, yeah, I saw that in the video. <laughs> I told you, he's a super fan. That worked pretty good, cutting out, uh, dishing that out with that grinder. You hopefully saw that just in the last clip there. If The only thing is the grinder couldn't get up here to the heel, so I'm trying to cut that out with the chisel or hog it out with the chisel right now. And the idea is to hog it out without taking off one of my fingers. That would be a good idea. I fit it to the body a little bit already, and uh, it's a little closer than it was because of this dish. I think we're going in the right direction. I don't know if the body will, if I can fit it up here yet or not, but I think I can. I can look underneath it and see if it's fitting okay. In fact, I can look underneath it a lot better now. That was really helpful, actually. Doing it this way, I can see under it, and now I can see better of what my problem is. So I need to get that tool again, the grinder, and work on this a little bit more, I see. What I could tell by uh, looking under it is this side here is hitting before this side by quite a bit, so I need to dish it out on this side over here. Let's see if that helped. Oh yeah, much better. On this side now, we're touching. On this side over here, we've got a small gap. So we're doing better. It still needs more of that same treatment. Now, quite honestly, I did bump it right there, and I wish I wouldn't have done that, but 
Yeah, it, I don't think it's going to create any problem because it's it's barely in the in the what's going to be cut out from the neck, so it's probably fine. But I got to be a little more careful on that part right there. Now that's really good here, fairly close on this side, but we're still not there. But I think from this point on, I'm going to use a smaller tool. This has done its job. Now I think I'll go to the Dremel tool with the uh, rotary sander here. I've got the uh, Dremel with the sanding drum here, and I'm going to try to do this a little more by hand. I think all we really have to do now is cut off this back corner, and I think it's going to fit pretty darn good. If they had made this a little more even, this would sure be a lot easier. Well, I don't have a perfect fit here yet, but I've got a real good fit on this side and an okay fit on the other side. It's not nearly as good as this side. I think I'm going to go ahead and now and try to profile this neck some more because the w extra wide width here is causing me trouble too. And once I profile it, that could change a lot of things. So I think I'm close enough to profile it and I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Well, my friends, I've off camera taken time and done the math again and drawn in the lines here. And I've drawn in the lines around the peg head. And so we're going to go over to the bandsaw and cut this all out. I had to use a lot of math to do this, and I had the thought while I was doing that that math teachers probably ought to use that argument in their math classes. And if you want to know what I mean, I'm saying you could say to the kids, how in the heck do you think you're ever going to be able to make a neck for your guitar if you don't learn math? You know, hey, that's an incentive right there. There you go, there's a rough out. And as you can see, there's another mother, mother Nature inclusion there. Those are just things that come in the wood, you know. It's just the way it is. But uh, some of that will probably go away as I carve all this out. It's going to be really a pretty neck, I think, overall. It just uh, going to take a little bit extra TLC. So now we're going to take it over to the vise and use a big old heavy-duty rasp on this and knock this all out of here. Okay, we got the uh, neck checked up in the vise here. I've got the big heavy duty rasp. This thing it, uh, really tears off the wood. Nice and smooth there. Now I'm going to turn it over and rough out the other side. You can probably see this side's much, you know, more angular, rough. And hopefully this uh, inclusion will come out of there. A little bit too much spring here. It's looking pretty good. Got a long ways to go yet, but it's starting to look like a guitar neck now. You can probably see there the how it's rounded off quite a bit. You know, it's got a long ways to go, but I'm gonna take it back over, to put it on the guitar now, and see what it looks like, and especially around in this area, and see what it, that uh, is gonna take to get it just right. And I may have to put it in a different vise and hold it a different way, too. Well, this neck is starting to look like a neck now. It fits pretty well, but then I noticed I'm also rocking this way, and I kept figuring out, what is, why is that thing rocking like that? Well, I've just 
discovered that instead of putting a neck on a guitar, I'm putting a neck on a pumpkin. Because it's not only round this way, but it's also round this way. And I'm not exaggerating, it is actually round both directions. Here's something straight and flat and, and black that you can see, and it rocks back and forth this way too. I've got it centered there, and I would say a 32nd of an inch to a 16th, same way here. This is the high spot. Not only do I have to make it fit this way, this way, but I also have to make it fit this goofy round area too. I'm having all kinds of issues trying to get this to fit up, and so I'm going to try the carbon paper and see if I, that will help me to see if I can figure out where it's really rubbing at. Yeah, that's kind of where one of the places I was suspecting is right there. You can probably see the black spots there and here. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to do that mostly off camera and I'll get it fitted up better and I'll show you hopefully in a minute or two how it looks. It's not been easy. Well, you can see that it's taken shape. I'm going to work on it some more off camera and finish it up and then I'll show you what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. You can see I have the neck clamped on there now. And uh, the joint down here is pretty good now. Um, the angle is sort of okay. It's probably tipped a little peg head down a little bit too much. Because I'm about an eighth inch off of the back of the off the top of the guitar right here, probably more than that actually, and I should only be about a sixteenth of an inch off the guitar. I'm really going to have to cut this down a little bit more yet. I'm going to have to change the angle a little bit more, where the neck angle cocks up like that a little bit more, or it's just not going to work. It's just difficult to get that angle. The angle is far harder than making the neck. The neck, making the neck part is fairly easy, but getting it attached to the body is the hard part. Well, I don't know how much I missed there with the camera, but uh, I have been fitting this neck. I've gotten it, got it fitted up pretty well. I took the finger planes and carved this off, checked it back to here. Everything looks real good. I'm going to take it back apart and uh, I'm going to take a little bit off of the underside and I'm also going to cut a little bit off the length because it's sticking out just a little bit past the end of the fretboard. Overall it's looking pretty good. I'm a little disappointed right here at the very heel. It's not touching but I think I can disguise that with a heel cap and cover that up for the most part. It's not going to be perfect probably, but I tell you what, when you're trying to fit something that's round in all these different directions and you're trying to get an angle correct to get to, to play correctly, it's just not that simple. Especially when the front is not is all round and and the sound hole and all the other stuff is not square to the body and to the center line. So it's just been a, it's been a real test. It is working, I believe, and I think it's going to be fine and play really well when we're done.